Hey gang, Josh here, and today I want to make a super beginner video. Uh, if you're picking up your bass for the first time or you're about to go out and buy one, this is a good place to start. I'm just going to go over what the parts of the bass are called and then what the basic technique is and kind of where your hands go and what they do generally and then give you a little something to practice just to get started. So first parts of the bass. Over here we've got the headstock. This whole assembly is called the headstock. We've got the tuning machines and the tuning pegs. The strings are attached up here. Then over here we've got the nut, which is the thing that the strings rest on. This whole bit is called the neck. The part where you actually put your fingers is called the fingerboard. And these uh, strips of metal that go along are called frets. And those are what help the pitch change as you put your fingers down. These are the strings. This whole bit is called the body of the bass. These are pickups. These are what picks up the vibration of the string and puts it in your amp and makes magical noise out of it. This is the bridge. The bridge saddles are what actually have the string resting on them. And these are the knobs. Probably figured that one out. And uh, there's some other little specifics, but that's kind of the basics of it. You're going to hear the words neck and fingerboard a lot. The bridge. Uh, the pickups are referred to as the neck pickup and the bridge pickup, respectively, because of what they're closest to. Pretty intuitive. Um, so that's kind of the basic rundown of what you actually need to know. The approach with your left hand is pretty straightforward and pretty consistent across different kinds of music. Your thumb is resting gently, without pressing very hard, on the middle of the back of the neck generally. It can move around, but you need to make sure that it's not too far up on the neck or you're going to have trouble reaching the, the E string. So basically all we do is we use our fingers to push down on different frets, which gives us different string lengths depending on where we're pressing down, which changes the pitch of the note. So as I put my fingers down on different frets going up the neck, this is up, even though gravity wise it's down. As I go up the neck the pitch goes higher because I'm shortening the length of the string. So I've usually got my hands splayed out in this one finger per fret position we call it because each finger gets its own fret so I've got them kind of spread out one two three four. Sometimes I do have my hand a little more compressed and sometimes I have it spread out further but in general fingering patterns come from that one finger per fret position. Right hand technique can be more complicated because there's so many different ways you can attack the bass. You can play it with your fingers. You can play it with your thumb and, and slap style. You can strum it with your fingers. You can pluck with your thumb and fingers, maybe like a guitar player would. So you have a lot of options with your right hand, but the basic technique is just plucking the strings with your index and middle fingers. So what you're doing, for the most part, is you're plucking the string sideways. Let me uh, let me rotate here so you guys can see. So I'm I've got my finger on the string and then I'm just pulling it sideways. So you don't have to pull up with it. So your fingers don't have to go up like that. You can just go straight across. And when you're playing on higher strings, your finger can just come rest on the next string down. It's pretty simple technique wise. It just takes some adjusting to getting your fingers coordinated and then also taking time and just getting your left and right hand coordinated so that your left hand fingers move when your right hand fingers are plucking. It's a little awkward at first, but they neurological adaptations do happen. So to get started, 
you can really go without having much structure. What I want you to do is to just explore the instrument and see what kind of sounds you can make and what you like and what you don't like. Because as you go through developing musically, I think what's really going to make you a good musician and bass player is not the exercises you do or the songs you learn, but the time that you take to experiment and come up with stuff on your own and kind of see what you can do with different scales or different chords or just go without structure entirely and just see what happens. I know it sounds a little bit vague and like, well, what am I supposed to do? But I mean, just look at this thing. It's just this world of mystery and potential. And you will certainly do a lot of practicing over the years with specific exercises and learning specific songs and and all that stuff is good but it's also important to just get started now with experimenting and improvising so what you can do now knowing only what i've just told you is you can start practicing plucking with your index and middle finger with your right hand and you can practice pushing down on the frets with your left hand so you can just do simple finger patterns like one two three four on whatever fret you want to do it on. But what I really want to get you to do is to just start playing with different sounds. Just play a note on a fret, then play a note on a different fret, then play on another fret. See what shapes you can make with your hand and see what they sound like. There's really no requirement for it to sound good to you. Because if you could already make everything sound good to you, then you wouldn't really need to practice, would you? So it'll take time for it to really sound satisfying, but it doesn't have to take that much time. It's pretty quick that you can start finding things that are interesting to you, and what's interesting to you will change over time. So I won't give you a specific exercise here, but I'll just give you an example of something you might try doing. You can just start by just practicing with your right hand and plucking your open strings. Just get used to alternating from your index and middle finger. Then you can just push down on some different notes. At whatever rhythm you want to do. You'll probably notice it's easier to switch notes if you play each note with a few repetitions. So you can experiment with doing both of those things. vary the rhythm, the note length, and as you do it over time, it'll start to sound better just by virtue of you experimenting and, and hopefully having fun. So I hope this gives you a basic idea of how to approach the instrument and how to get started with kind of making it your own voice. Um, bass is a really exciting instrument to play. It's only been in existence, the electric bass has only been around since the 1950s, and I think by virtue of that it's a particularly exciting instrument for me because there's not a long-standing tradition and people have really only been exploring the bass, you know, for 30 or 40 years, so there's definitely still some new muso-archaeological territory to uncover. It's just a freaking cool instrument. There's so much you can do with it. I feel really, uh, feel really well expressed through it, and I'm really glad I have it in my life, and that I took the time to get to a point where I could feel like I'm expressing myself well. You know, whether, however other people perceive it, or uh, however it works out in the external world, interacting with other musicians, that's all good too, but I'm, I'm just glad that I have an instrument that I can express myself through because it's really important to me. So I hope that you'll take the time to see if bass is going to be an important voice for you. And if you do, I hope that you find my videos helpful. And uh, also, if you're watching this when I put it up, uh, at interactivemusicteacher.com, we've got a free 10-week beginner course coming up. Uh, you can tune in once a week and there will be live streamed HD lessons. You'll be able to ask questions live on the chat. 
So there's a link below this video to check that out at interactivemusicteacher.com. I also teach private lessons on Skype if you're interested on some one-on-one. -on -one, I highly recommend that. And as always, you can subscribe to my channel. You're very welcome here. Have a good one.